my co-director, and she has a few more things to say. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. My name is Jean Roach. I'm from the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe in South Dakota. I'm here as a survivor. My family has been abused by the Bureau of Prisons, the United States government. My brother was shot at at 10 years old at the Oglala firefight. We barely all survived. Most of us were teenagers. And nothing has ever been done about the wrongdoings of the FBI when they attacked our people. Leonard Peltier only protected us. What's wrong with that? Long time ago, they've killed our leaders, Sitting Bull, Crazy Horse, put them in prisons. They're doing the same thing to Leonard Peltier. We're tired of the genocide. We're tired of the, the double standards that my people are experiencing. And with COVID, it's even worse. Our numbers are high. We have people dying all the time. And we all know that if you're high risk with underlying conditions, you're more apt to, you know, pass on. But we're not trying to think in a negative way. We want Leonard in the hospital immediately. He has an aortic aneurysm. I mean, he's very high risk. He's a diabetic. Why does he have to be treated like a less than human? All the people that have dark skin, we know what we're talking about. And we're tired of it. We really are. We want this genocidal treatment of the double standards to quit. We want Leonard Peltier immediately released and we could get him some rightful hospital care. The key thing is that in the early moments of COVID, the early days, you can get treatment. He does not have access to this. Being in an isolation unit does not mean a hospital. They're just monitoring. He needs to have his vitals monitored on a 24-hour basis. And we were demanding that they put him in the hospital and they also need to take care of their other inmates. My sister did 23 years. She had COVID inside the prison. She survived even though she had underlying health risks. And they wouldn't even uh, give her the right proper medical care. This is federal prison. And a lot of our people are in federal prison because of the sentencing guidelines that we have to face on the reservations. And it's mandatory sentencing, which is not right. Back to Leonard. Can you please contact your tribal leaders, your Congress people, Joe Biden. Okay, we're tired of it. What year is this? The colonization and genocide has to stop. Anyway, I'd like to thank everybody that's taken a moment to help our prisoners. It's not only Leonard, we have prisoners in the state penitentiaries. Why do we have to suffer and why do people have to die? They can't hide the facts from our families that our people are dying in the prison of COVID. Now is the time to take action. We need Dr. Fossey to make a statement about the prisons. They are humans too. Thank you, Dr. Fossey. Now, just so you know, that was Jean. She's been in this since 76. She was out there. She's a survivor. And she is what our women are, strength. If it wasn't for our women, we wouldn't be here. She's here fighting for the release of Leonard, who has COVID, which has many other difficult, difficult health conditions, but nobody wants to give him the proper help. Nobody wants to let him go home to his family. He wants to beg, bounce his grandkids on his knees. That's all he wants to do. Maybe a garden. But that's what he wants. He wants to be home. 
and he should be home because he's wrongfully convicted. He is nothing more than a political refugee, and what he stands for is what they're scared of. And if that scares them, how many of us standing up will scare them to release him, to let him go home? Now, I'm going to give this over to President of the committee, Leonard's committee. Oh, you want to go about me? Co-commissioner, sorry. <laughs> Co-director, it's all right. It's okay. Any questions? Anybody have any questions they'd like to ask? I've got all kinds of answers. No. Yeah, our attorney was able to get through and get some updates on day one. Um, as of right now, we have not received one update at all. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. We are left in the dark, as every family is. If they've got a, a family member that's incarcerated, they don't know if they're living or dying. They have no idea how they're being treated, how they're being cared for. It's a pain and an agony that I don't want to wish on anybody. Not anybody. Leonard Peltier, the question was, what was he convicted for? Leonard Peltier was on the Pine Ridge Reservation in 1975. He was called to be there in a time of civil unrest. We had a, uh, the civil rights movement in the 60s. Then we had the Native American rights movement, the American Indian movement, to gain land back, to gain status to gain their people, their culture, everything that they can that had been taken away from them. I'm going to let Jean answer this a little bit better because she was there. She was there on the day that Leonard saved everybody's life. Yeah, uh, one of the things that about being a Oglala is we was helping the community. The community was being um, harassed by the goon squads which were backed by the United States government. They have a program called Contel Pro, and that was used against the American Indian movement like it was the Black Panthers. Okay, right now we are seeking documents. We have a few, but they've hidden them for 46 years. Okay, people have died in this movement because we all we want to do is be able to uh, live in our own ways, our cultural ways. That's all we have ever wanted. We don't want all this stuff. We have a treaty with the United States government, the Lakota Nation, and they never honor it. And that was a treaty violation having the federal agents on the reservation at the time. And also there's a top 10 crime act, which they say they were looking for cowboy boots that somebody got robbed. That's so hilarious. All their mistakes they have documented, and that's what we have proving that Leonard Peltier was not guilty. Also, his co-defendants, Butler and Robidoux, were acquitted on the basis of self-defense. The FBI attacked the people. And most of us there at the shootout were under the age of 18. The people that were charged were the adults. So, uh, yeah, they didn't want that to be known. You know, there's so many things that they've hidden. You know, the U.S. 7th Cavalry, their mentality continues in the federal agents, the way they treat us in inhuman ways. We want Leonard Peltier to, to be released immediately. All of our resources. That's and it seemed very suspicious that he got COVID. It's been three years almost that this has been here. And he's been safe in the elder unit, okay? No boosters. One of the things that he didn't get was a booster shot and others got it last month. Uh, I don't know why, but we kind of have a feeling the same double standards we've been dealing with all our lives. Another thing that's suspicious is that one of the inmates that was sick coughed on him in the hallway, okay? And then, when he told the staff that he wanted a COVID shot, or be a test, they waited till 8 o'clock that night. So I'll tell you what, how many people 
in this elder unit have been exposed because of their in in actions reckless reckless misconduct and if i had a family member in there i would be very upset at this point in any of these prisons all these federal state these prisons don't care about you all they care about is the dollars and another thing you don't care about is your human rights that's all we ask for is the basic respect and human rights but I don't know if that answered your question. <laughs> does, does, Thank you. Yes, he's a his other health conditions include diabetes, which is like a pandemic among our native people in its own. He's never had a good healthy diet, you know. Heart condition. And then he has a heart condition. I mean, he has several things. He's 78 years old. Why do they continue to? pick on him and abuse him. This is beyond being incarcerated. This is abuse and, you know, elder abuse, if you ask me. He needs to be released back to his people. He could spend his few years that maybe he's left. After 46 years inside there, you know, it's just like incomprehensible to think about the tragedies and the unfair treatment he's been through. He's a very strong person. I mean, I can't even think of spending a week in prison, let alone 46 years. And being innocent. Especially if you're innocent. That's right. And hey, we have a voice here, and we're going to use it. We want everybody to write uh, the e-message to the White House between Tuesday and Thursday. You can call their comment line between 11 to 3 p.m. So everything counts, and we have Congress people that have already stood up for us. Uh, she can give more details. Hold on, he has a question. Oh, excuse me. Yes, he's in Coleman One Prison. The federal prison. Federal. That's what I'm saying. People that have, you know, people in prison, you need to check on them. the percentage of uh, in 2020 when it first broke out the percentage in the federal prisons uh, you know that's a good question because there's a lot of hidden hidden agendas there you know they don't count them as deaths you know they claim 275 and over 42,000 inside the federal prison have caught COVID and only 275 have passed away from it I don't know that's not I don't know it doesn't click right they, they are not they're not releasing any numbers and if they would they, it would probably be uh, lies yeah. so yeah. there hasn't been any numbers ever released let's talk about how he, who he is as a person we start that anybody else i want to kind of just bring up the fact that a lot of people don't know who leonard peltier is as a man as a man i've gotten to know this man so well he is a good, kind, honest man. He has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize seven times since he's been incarcerated. He helps indigenous youth. He helps a Christmas program every year. He helps with scholarships. He's an accomplished um, author, an accomplished poet. He's an artist. He donates every penny of that forward. Okay, and there's a lot of rumors out there of who Leonard Peltier is, a lot of FBI propaganda, a lot of lies. We work with truth. We work with who he is. We know the path that he walked his entire life. There's not one incident in Leonard Peltier's life that talks about or shows any violations or, or um, misconduct or, or aggression towards another human being. He lives for others. In fact, one time he told me I don't I never owned more than two shirts my whole life. Because if somebody needed a shirt, I gave him the one off my back. And I'm not dramatizing. This is who Leonard is. Anybody here that's ever met Leonard will tell you the same damn thing. So don't listen to lies, don't listen to propaganda. We got truth. We got it all on paper. And the, like she talked about, there's a lot of reports from the FBI that we don't have. What are they trying to hide? Come on! 46 years, what you trying to hide? Come on, bring it on. Let's see what you got. 
Okay, that's why you don't see it. Can you announce yeah. the Democracy Now! show? Today? We did have Democ Amy Goodman from Democracy Now! was on this morning with um, his attorney, former judge Kevin Sharp. We also had a big article from Michael Moore. We've had a lot of celebrities reaching out, musicians, you name it. It's happening. It's happening. People are coming up off of their couches and speaking up. And that's what we need all of you to do. Question? No. Nope. Okay. A question? Okay. Go ahead. Close it up. All right. Well, thank you all for coming. Uh, any further questions, you can direct that to the International Leonard Peltier Defense Committee page on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're everywhere. TikTok. Chat away the night. Chat away the night. Yep, we'll be up. So anything you guys have any questions for, go ahead. We're not afraid. We've got the truth behind us. Thank you for coming. Free Leonard Peltier. Free Leonard Peltier. Rise up for Peltier. Now rise up for injustice. Because Free Leonard Peltier now. That's right. Free Leonard Peltier now. 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 And if, Peltier now. And if they can do this to him, they can do it to you. It doesn't matter your skin color. If the FBI wants to put you in prison, you're going. You're going. Thank you.